In this video, I'm going to go over four of the most common jujitsu injuries and how to continue rolling with them. I figured today was a perfect day to make this video since I am actually having a rest day because as you can see here, I've got a nice amount of strapping tape covering my right shoulder and this is not the first time I've injured myself. I think I should win an award for the most injured person on the mat because I've injured pretty much everything on my body in Jiu Jitsu. Considering my lovely circumstances, I want to go with shoulder injuries as my top one of the most common injuries that I see on the mat for Jiu Jitsu. Now on Friday, I tore my tres major on the back of my right shoulder. I've torn my, my rotator cuff, my long bicep, my AC, my SC, and something weird in my trap uh, over the last six years of doing Jiu Jitsu. So shoulder injuries is my number one. Now as far as rolling with shoulder injuries goes, there was a moment where I did have one of my arms in a sling for about two weeks at that point I did not roll with it but from yesterday I started rolling with this one tied into my belt through one hand it's actually a lot of fun to roll with one arm and I found that the belts that were browns and blacks and higher ranks than me decided it would be a fun game to also tuck their right hand into their belts and roll with me whereas I found some of the blue belts and white belts were not having it and they were going to take full advantage of having two free arms. Number two of fun digest injuries has to be the neck, bulging discs, pinching nerves, numb fingers, all the fun little stuff that comes with it. Now I've had a bulging disc in my neck, I actually got it in the first six months of jujitsu training so a couple of you guys that follow my videos have heard me talk about this so many times but the thing is with neck injuries I've managed to roll most of the time through my neck injury even though my hands were pretty much numb and a little pins and needles and I was told otherwise not to. The way I did it is I played I played top game. I would tell my opponent quite a bit that I can't lay on my back because I found it really hard to hold my head up in guard. And if I was laying on the ground, I found it very uncomfortable. So as far as drilling and stuff went, I did a few less reps. I held my head as much as possible. And I just avoided playing the bottom. And I would actually do rolls that were focused on passing and focused on mount. And I know it's really hard to do proper rolls when you're not constantly playing with positions. But if you've got really good opponents, they kind of understand what you're going through. And there's good chance that eventually they'll go through the same thing or they've been through the same thing. It was actually pretty bad at one point where I had to wear a neck brace most of the time in order to just kind of release a bit of the tension in my neck and I would have a neck brace, drive into training, take my neck brace off, go straight into training, hop back in the car and throw a neck brace on. Genius. Number three of fun injuries is wrist and fingers. Now I'm starting to play a little bit more gi and I'm starting to get those lovely looking ET style big chunky fingers that are apparently going to give us all arthritis one day. Yay! As far as well with them goes, I recommend strapping up. As soon as you start feeling like really tender in the wrist, a lot of people like myself that aren't super sporty and aren't really strong in the wrist get really, really sore pains. I recommend putting just two to three layers of strapping tape like bracelets around each wrist and it really just helps with taking away that pressure when you're doing exercises and you know, exercise on the mats and exercise in the gym as well. But as soon as you do a warm up drill and you feel those sharp pains in your wrist, I recommend just throwing straps on them straight away and you're pretty much good to roll with them after that point. If you need to, full wrist braces and when your wrists are really bad, I recommend actually using tape in a way that makes it look kind of like a cast across your whole hands. And as far as fingers goes, as soon as you start feeling those little niggles and pains, start strapping them up. There's plenty of videos online of how to strap your wrists and hands properly. And number four, lucky last, is of course knees, ACLs, MCLs, LCLs, all those fun little niggly things that we do on the mat. Now, here's the thing with rolling too soon with your knee and I learned this lesson the hard way. I was in a position when I was in turtle, a guy grabbed my leg and I tweaked it and I slightly only did the smallest little tear of my MCL. Now it made this massive little pop noise which scared everyone on the mat because everyone instantly heard it and I thought it was my ACL and the pain was quite intense. I iced it but I gave it about a week rest and after a week it actually felt really good. The dumb thing I did is I jumped jump straight back on the mat and thought it would be a good idea to roll and then I was rolling and then I did my LCL which was the other side of the knee. I really hope I'm getting my body parts correct here. Which is, don't judge me if I'm not. Which is on the other side of the knee and then at that point I was off for about a month before I could actually hop back on the mat. So I waited until I was fully recovered. Now a lot of people do come back on the mat with full knee pads on, knee guards, knee supports when they're feeling comfortable. But you really got to know your body and know your limits and understand that there's a huge risk that even if you feel good coming back too soon. But the one thing I didn't do right is when I did come back after that week I probably should have put a brace on it or fully strapped it or made it a little bit more compressional supported 
um, whereas I just went free fall and just started rolling again and made it even worse. So that's my list of my top four jujitsu injuries and how to continue training through them. Now the key is to know your own body. There were a couple injuries that I was told do not go back on the mat with these and do not roll with them and I knew that I could I to put my hand in my belt or I could um, strap it up properly or I could get away with rolling whereas there's other injuries where I've definitely gone back way too soon and have definitely made it a lot worse. A few key points here. Make sure you know your training partner as well. Whenever my neck is bad I actually don't roll with people I don't feel comfortable with and if I am rolling with someone that I'm a little bit nervous with rolling with because I still do still do deal with my neck injury and I have a thumb that likes to pop out for fun and all that lovely stuff that comes with jujitsu but I'm really cautious with who I roll with now because this is the sport I want to do for the rest of my life and I'm only six seven years in and I've still got another 30 40 or so years left on the map so know your know your trained opponents and also listen to your body know when it's good and bad to get on and off the mat and also if you have to stop feel free to stop grab an ice pack stretch do what you need to do and there's no shame in being injured thanks guys so much for checking out my video if you haven't already big red subscribe button right there uh, if you had any wicked injuries let me know in the comments below and if you have any tips for me for someone that constantly gets injured then please also let me know in the comments below in the meantime keep being strong happy and healthy